untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a teamer colored artifact deck that I cannot stop playing as I'm having so much fun with it. I'm always a sucker for these effects that let us play cards off the top of our deck. Originally cards like Experimental Frenzy, then we had Bolas' Citadel, more recently Augur of Autumn, and now both a Reality Chip and Myria, Scholar of Antiquity, which can either tap an untapped non-token artifact we control to add green mana, or we can tap two untapped non-token artifacts we control to exile the top card of our library, and we can play it this turn. And then we have Reality Chip, a 2 mana 04 legendary equipment jellyfish that lets us take a look at the top card of our library, and if we reconfigure it for 2 and a blue we can also play a lands and cast spells from the top of our library. So the goal of the deck is to get both Reality Chip reconfigured and Myria in play, that way we can not only play spells off the top with Reality Chip, but if we ever hit a second land, which we won't be able to play for the turn, then we can still exile it with Myria by untapping two untapped artifacts and essentially keep going and then we can get an additional mana discount from Enthusiastic Mechanaut, a 2 mana 2-2 two, two artifact creature with flying, saying artifact spells we cast cost 1 mana a less to cast, so now all of a sudden we can play some of our 1 mana artifact creatures for free off the top of our deck, and not only are they free, but once in play they can actually make mana with Myria, or we can tap them to use the second ability to find more spells off the top, so that quickly turns into this chain reaction where we can almost cast our entire deck in one big turn, and the mirror box is another important piece of the puzzle, a 3 mana artifact saying the legend rule doesn't apply to permanence we control, so we can have as many reality chips or myrias in play as we want, and then each legendary creature we control gets plus one plus one, and each non-token creature we control gets plus one plus one for each author creature we control with the same name as that creature. So now all of a sudden we're playing these walking bulwarks and iron apprentices for free, and they also pump each other, so they actually turn into relevant win conditions, especially once we get multiple copies of Mirror Box all kind of pumping each other. The Mirror Box can also tap for mana using Myria or help us find more cards, so you can kind of see where this is headed. Then we also have two copies of Dragon Spark Reactor as an additional win condition that can slowly pick up counters and eventually we can sacrifice it to deal that much damage to a creature and a player. So even if the opponent maybe wipes the board after we've put a bunch of permanents in play, we might still have a Dragon Spark Reactor with a bunch of counters to help us close out the game. And Patchwork Automaton, another artifact that benefits from us casting lots of artifacts, getting a plus one counter each time, has a ward two, so not that easy for the opponent to kill with spot removal. And then the Artificer can also tap to add colorless that we can spend on abilities or to cast artifacts, which is most of our deck. And the Salvaged Mana Worker is actually quite useful as well, as it can fix our mana, which can be helpful if we have a bunch of pain lands in play, so we can actually make mana without losing one life, and can also sometimes just fix our mana if we only have, let's say, blue and red, and still need green to cast Myria, and it can also filter the green mana from Myria into additional blue or red once we're comboing off, so we can still cast more spells off the top in case we find cards like Mechanaut or Reality Chip we need to cast. And uh, yeah, I think that, that covers most of it. Our mana base, as we mentioned, has a few pain lands, which are totally fine when casting artifacts, since we can just use the colorless mode without needing to take any damage, but still useful when actually trying to cast a Mechanaut or Myria on curve. And then we've got some basic lands, and then the channel lands as well, even though we're not channeling them very often, since we do have a relatively low land count at just 22, but that's also because we want to keep the spell density as high as possible, so Myria and Reality Chip are more likely to combo off. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, hand seems keepable, we've got Mana Worker to fix for red to play Myria and Artificer to generate a bit of extra mana. Still wouldn't mind a third land. And then I might go Artificer on two, turn three, Automaton, followed by Mana Worker. Now we might also just play a turn two Automaton, if it doesn't look like we're gonna hit our land drop, so I can play both first. Put into red-black with a reactor, so maybe an Oni Cult Anvil sacrifice deck. We found red mana, at least. So, does that change our play? Nah, I think I still play Automaton. We can turn our creatures into mana creatures as soon as we play Myria. 
So I'll probably still go for Automaton next turn. And then we can play Miria and kind of empty our hand. Bulwark's nice too. Can fill out our curve. And now we have a 3-3 to block the Shaman. And yeah, if we play Miria, we can still play both artifacts afterwards. And then even if they answer one with a reactor, we still have a backup, which will be quite useful. Opponent's gonna play with fire. That's gonna be their entire turn gone. So probably won't see the shaman attack. So now I would need a land in order to play Miria plus two artifacts. All right, stick to the plan. Now it does potentially open up the uh, Shaman to attack if they can remove Miria. But getting these artifacts in play means we can next turn use a second ability more effectively. Reflection could definitely be a problem if they combine it with a Blood Tithe Harvester. Or some other scary creature with a powerful Enters a Battlefield ability. Opponent's down to two cards in hand. And we just want to untap with Miria and cast as many spells off the top as possible. Hopefully find a reality chip at some point which will make it easier to string together a whole bunch of spells. Bone is still looking at our automaton. They might have another way to kill it. Bone splinters? Okay. Happy they're focusing on automaton instead of Myria. All right, we'll start by exiling the top card. Mana worker we can play. Exile the top card again. Find a Mechanaut. So now I can play Apprentice for free. And then the question is, do we exile the top card? If we exile anything other than a uh, land or a one drop, we won't be able to play it. I think it's still worth it. All right, reactor sadly goes to waste, and we'll hit for three. And then uh, next turn, it's going to be even easier to combo off with Mechanaut, giving us a discount. Opponent hasn't presented any additional artifacts for reactor yet, so that might be happening soon. For now, just a, a lonely reflection of Kiki Jiki, waiting for a friend. Ooh, and an Omnixilus, gonna sacrifice Reflection. They probably could have attacked for two first. Alright. I mean, Omnixilus, we can just pressure pretty easily, so they're gonna be forced to make a couple tokens, but then we still have a Mechanaut that can fly over. And we'll keep the back of Myria. So let's continue to combo here. Land we can play. Can play Bulwark for free. And there's our reality chip, awesome. So now we can reconfigure. And then could even tap the uh, reality chip itself to make a mana to help reconfigure. And we'll put it on something like a bulwark. Miria on top. Don't have a mirror box in play yet, so that's gonna be our turn after we attack. Can kill the one loyalty of Nixilus, pressure the other. And Devil Token can take out our Iron Apprentice if they want, just goes face. So 
So yeah, now mirror box is kind of the final piece of the puzzle. So we can cast multiple of the same legendary and have them stick around. But uh, yeah, this is already enough to prompt a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and we've got reality chip. So I'm gonna keep. Could use some uh, mana acceleration, either a mechanaut or artificer to make extra mana. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of slow to get the reality chip going up against Rat Aggro with turn one Kumano. So, yeah, we'll uh, play Automaton. Might have been reasonable to hold Apprentice until after we play Automaton. But we'll play it this way. And then Miria would also be an excellent draw to make extra mana and then uh, make it easier to leverage reality chip as well. Okay, so we'll play Chip plus Bulwark. And a Mirror Box coming up. I'm fine trading Automaton for both of their apprentices, I think. But I'm just gonna jump with one, that makes sense. At least the Reality Chip can block a 3 3. And Bulwark can block. Etching. Right, they've got their own automaton. And there's Miria on top, awesome. So how do we want to best set up to take full advantage of Miria? Probably just play Mirror Box and then next turn we can play Miria and Mana Worker in the same turn pretty easily. And then keep our Reality Chip as an extra blocker as opposed to trying to reconfigure it. Also grows up to a 1-5. So yeah, we'll pass it back. Happy to play defense. And then completely take over with our two draw engines. Does not feel like our opponent's gonna stick around to see our deck in action here. Since they already seem a bit impatient. Reinforced Ronin, good combo with the Automaton. Well, they're still gonna have a hard time attacking into our board. A Ronin attack, so they probably have a play with fire that they can use to finish off Automaton. That's fine by me. Uh, what if I block with the Reality Chip, then they can finish that off. This seems better. So that grows their Automaton. They would still need a land to cast a play with fire because of Ward. Just a reckless impulse. Alright, so they just wanted to transfer over the plus one counters, I suppose. That's fine. And we're about to have some fun with Miria. So that's step one. And then the mana worker can also help turn the green mana into blue mana to play another reality chip. So tap mirror box, tap bulwark. Or maybe Apprentice, play Mana Worker, and then play another Reality Chip. I guess we also haven't played a land yet, so maybe I should do that first. Play a land and then play Reality Chip. All right, a nice 2-6. And then end of turn we can also exile the top card of our deck with Miria so we don't have to draw an extra land. So our opponent's got a bunch of Ronins, which will be able to grow Automaton to attack past ours. But uh, we're about to have a pretty exciting turn. So I think we're okay with that. Can take 7 or 8 damage. Don't want to put Miria in harm's way if we can help it. Alright, so end of turn we'll exile the top card. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And our hand is just missing a card draw engine. 
We can make red mana with our mana worker. Yeah, I'll give it a try. Hopefully find Reality Chip or Miria soon. And then for now, play Coasts. In case we will need to channel Soaring City. Phoenix Chick from our opponents. Our opponent are an aggressive red deck. There's Reality Chip. So, still going for a mana worker first. So we can get our Mechanaut down to discount our other artifacts. And then... Uh, can still play a reality chip next turn. A brawler, so red green aggro, maybe some additional colors just for domain. But yeah, we can play mechanauts, and uh, I'll have to take one as well. And then still play a reality chip. And then next turn I can empty out my hands. Another mana worker coming up, good with a mirror box, as we'll be able to pump both. And a Green Widow. Okay, so we can block Brawler with Reality Chip and Phoenix Chick with Mechanaut, so no attacks. And uh, do I want to reconfigure Reality Chip? It gives me a free land. I think I'm happy enough just emptying my hands to get more counters on Reactor first. And then we also keep Reality Chip as a blocker. Although it could benefit us to reconfigure it so it's not exposed to removal. But in a red-green deck they're probably not going to have a ton of ways to kill a 1-5. And uh, no attacks here since Green Widow has reach. So we're setting up nicely to take over with our reality chip. Hopefully finding Miria at some point. So we can get rid of excess lanes. A lightning strike on Mechanaut. Makes it a little bit harder to combo off but... We'll still make it work. So, no attacks here. And a Weather Seed Treaty. When playing Thram Portal to enable Brawler. So it doesn't look like they have any additional lands on the splash for domain purposes. Alright, let's see how many cards we can play off the top. Another reality chip we can play thanks to mirror box. Times two. We'll have to play a land now. And a mechanaut coming up. Alright, not bad. We'll uh, pass here. And then if we unconfigure the reality chip, we can actually grow the ones in play. The Morrow a 6 6. Phoenix chick hits us for one. Let's keep it going. Another reactor. I guess we want to play Mechanaut first to get a discount, even though we lose out on a counter. Having more mana could be more relevant here. And then we have to be careful with Mana Workers and Reactor. I'm going to actually take one, so we keep the Mana Workers ability to maybe fix if we need more reds in the rest of our turn. That's not the case, sadly. Okay, well, we can uh, still sacrifice a Reactor if we want. Not sure what we want to take out. Probably the Territorial Morrow. As we mentioned, we could unconfigure just to have a larger reality chip. But we'll pass a turn for now. Even if they play another basic land type, we'll be able to use Reactor. Opponent pumping Phoenix Chick. I think that's fine. We'll take a bit of damage. But uh, we can deal with a bigger threat. All right, now an 8 8 Morrow. Still dies to our nine counters, luckily. So the 8 8 attacks. And I mentioned the Phoenix Chick as well. And we'll do this now. For opponent, does have a Gaia's Might as a pump spell. I guess we could get punished. But we can still at least trade for the Morrow. Right, and that's what they have. So 12 12. Need to put three power in front. What don't we care about as much? I guess we can trade one mana worker. This seems fine. And counter goes on. Mechanaut, so it can maybe attack past Green Widow at some point. For now we keep going. Gotta build up our second reactor. 
and try to find Miria so we can get rid of excess lands of the top. Which is currently the only thing that's stopping us from comboing off all the way. As we hit another one. Okay. Do we want to attack? We can reactor kill Green Widow, attack with the Mechanauts. Opponent gets back Green Widow end of turn. That seems fine. Opponent's at 10 after all. What if we just attack with everyone? How many attackers do we actually have? Yeah, opponent's got two blockers left. So that's good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And seems acceptable as we have Reality Chip as our card draw engine here. For now, play Bulwark. Opponent on a blue deck, so happy enough playing Reality Chip turn 2. So we can play around a counter spell. Automaton on top. Transforming a Delver right away, and they're playing red, so they might actually have some burn spells. Although at 4 toughness, Reality Chip should be safe. The main problem is Aberration, now Infantry, which can also quickly grow. So, I don't think I have time to reconfigure at the moment, so we'll play Automaton, and then next turn maybe go Artificer plus Mana Worker. And hope to... Soak up a bit of damage. Balmor, also incredibly scary. So yeah, this is not going to go well for us. Just a little bit too much damage too quickly. They probably could have pumped infantry to attack with that as well. So yeah, we'll stick to the plan. Not going to reconfigure yet. Just going to play Artificer to access more mana. And then hopefully Automaton can trade for the infantry. But uh, that's going to be pretty tricky. We're also just dying to the flyers. Which uh, we don't have a great answer to unless we get a mirror box and multiple mechanauts going. Another ancestral anger. That's a lot of triggers. So we're taking 10 in the air. Down to one. That's to any burn spell. And doesn't look like we're comboing off anytime soon. So yeah, think we're dead. Can reconfigure reality chip. Play a bulwark for one mana. That's not gonna save me. But I guess it's the most fun we can have here. And then can't even tap the Shivan Reef, so need mana worker to fix for blue. All right, that's it. GG's. Quick and brutal. But uh, yeah, that's why we don't play this deck in a ranked setting between aggressive decks and control decks with plenty of sweepers. We're probably not in for a great time. Okay, we're on the play, and the yeah, our hand seems fine. We've got Reality Chip as one of our card draw engines, Artificer to accelerate our mana. We'll start there, and then next turn we can double spell Automaton plus Reality Chip. Opponent Red Green with a Gala Greeters. Okay, I think we stick to the plan Automaton into Reality Chip. And then next turn I could already reconfigure if I want. Another chip's not bad when we have Mirror Box. And then we probably want to get another Artificer going, not only to benefit from Mirror Box, but also just to make more mana. Brazen Upstart, 4-2, when it dies, can provide a bit of value. Okay, land on top, I wouldn't mind drawing. So let's say we reconfigure onto Automaton. Play a land, play another Artificer. Could also go for Reactor now, sure. Grow Automaton and get a reactor going. And then the Ward 2 means it's going to be a little bit more difficult for the opponent to remove our reconfigured reality chip. Ascendancy can find more creatures or planeswalkers. We'll take 4 for now. Alright, so. 
We even have a mana worker in case we find our three mana legend. For now, Boseju. Probably fine to play. Could also keep it and then use mana worker for fixing to get rid of Ascendancy. I think I'd rather just get rid of it and uh, dig a bit deeper into our library. Alright, another lands unfortunate. We'll go with uh, mana worker plus mirror box or I guess artifice are still fine. That way we'll have more mana for next turn. Alright. Do we want to attack? I don't think so. I guess Automaton would trade for both creatures, which they're less likely to do. But next turn we can easily grow it some more. So it doesn't seem worth it. And especially if we find a third Artificer, it would feel bad to trade one. And then Reactor could also deal with Upstart if we want to get rid of it. Socialite's fine. Okay, can play our Mechanauts, which will also help in casting lots of spells in the same turn. And there's Myria. So we've got a full combo here. Don't want to play a land yet in case we find more on top. A mirror box we can play using Artificers. Although now we can also use Myria and tap some of our non-creature artifacts for mana. There's another Myria on top. So I don't have Mana Worker in play just yet, but we can get it in play. That way we don't have to play our land yet for the turn. And then play another Myria using the Mana Worker's ability. Can tap Mirror Box times two and reactor. Could have also maybe kept reactor untapped on the off chance we can actually pay the four mana to activate it if we find some zero mana artifacts on top. But we'll just keep going. And then now I'll have to play my mountain if I want to play another Myria, which I guess we're happy to do here. Can also tap the reality chip that's attached. Play another Myria. And we'll just keep going. One mana Artificer. A one mana Automaton. We can pay using the Artificer we just played. And I'm happy enough playing another Mirror Box if it means not attacking with uh, Automaton here. Okay, so no attacks this turn, but uh, we're setting up for a very powerful attack next turn. The sweeper effect would be unfortunate, to say the least. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, reactor can almost kill the opponent by itself. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hands... Is missing a card draw engine, but it still has quite a bit of potential with Mechanaut. So a turn two we can play Automaton, since we don't have the mana for a turn two Mechanaut. Or maybe a Reactor first. Would be fun to play one mana Automaton. Put into red green. Okay, so now I could play Mechanaut. I think I'm still leaning maybe Reactor here. And then next turn we'll be able to play Mechanaut plus Automaton. Could even try and wait until turn 4 to play Mechanaut. And then more cheap artifacts alongside it. And then for now... Just play one of the automatons, and then next turn we'll be able to grow it quite a bit. Yeah, you know what? Against a werewolf deck. Seems like a fine plan. That way we don't expose our creature to a Moonrager slash 
and then I'll save the Bulwark to play after the second Automaton, so that also picks up an extra counter. The Partners at least doesn't have a creature to pump. Okay, and then we can hang on to Boseju to maybe blow up the Howling Moon. So Mechanaut step one, second Automaton step two. And then unload the rest of our hands. And then the reactor can deal with the partners. And attack for five. Not a bad turn. Opponent did get a wolf out of the deal, but that's okay. A Liberator, that's too bad. That can blow up our reactor before we get a chance to activate it. Although if they're pumping it with partners and they sacrifice it, at least it's not going to feel as bad. Interesting attack from the partners. They might have a pump spell. Um, yeah, because they cannot pay for like a play with fire to finish off Automaton. But if they're tapped out, then at least they won't be able to use Liberator. So I think that's acceptable. And our opponent explodes. All right, so maybe they did not quite do the math there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And this hand could definitely combo off with uh, Mechanaut giving us a discount and Miria helping us play spells off the top. So we'll play a tap land, and then we can play Apprentice for free next turn. Could also decide to play Automaton first, although Curtains could mess with our plan. Probably goes for Miria anyway. So maybe it's fine to play Automaton and then start picking up more counters that way. And then next turn Mechanaut plus Mana Worker and Apprentice. They could be tempted to just draw with Bankbuster, but no, Curtains transforms. And I'm guessing takes Miria. Nope, takes the Mechanaut instead. Okay. So maybe they have other answers to Miria here, and they don't want us to have that explosive start. Found another Automaton, which we can play in the meantime. And our opponent's gonna get in for four. Mirror box could be good. For now, I'm happy enough playing Automaton plus Apprentice. Get those counters going. And then next turn, I could play Miria plus some other artifacts alongside it. And at least the Automatons getting counters means they can stay out of range from a Meat Hook Massacre. All right, cut down killing Automaton while they can. But that's their entire turn gone. So they can hit for four once again if they want to. Alright, we'll take it. And then we can play Miria. Mirror box. And uh, I guess that would be it. Or we can play a mana worker and then play mirror box next turn. That way a Tomaton can hit back. And a back of Miria is nice to have. So next turn we can maybe exile the top card of our library, tapping Apprentice and Mana Worker. Trespasser now too. Can crew Bankbuster. Do I double block Revealing Eye is the question. Yeah, that may be worth it since we have another Miria. And we're getting pretty low on life here at 10. Opponent's not crewing Bankbuster, so maybe planning to play defense with it. Works for me. So step one, exile top card. And hope for something like a reality chip or a Mechanaut. Apprentice still useful. We can play that. 
and a mirror box, and then exile the top card. If it's a land, I can still play it. If it's a one drop, I can still play it. Or I can tap the automaton to have a wider range of cards we can still play. But uh, I think we try it this way. Alright, so we won't be able to play Artificer here unless we tap Automaton, which I guess is still worth it. And that will be the end of our turn. Miria also getting pumped by Mirrorbox as it's legendary. And yeah, our opponent stuck on three lanes, finds a fourth. But uh, can now quickly fall behind, shield it is a problem, although at least Miria doesn't draw extra cards, just exiles them. The children's gonna put a pretty fast clock on us. So let's see what we can find. Mirror box and mana worker. Find another automaton. Can play that. Alongside, probably an apprentice. Find a land. And one more activation. Finds a land as well. Okay. I guess we can still play another Miria thanks to Mirror Box. And uh, do we attack? At 8 life, I don't feel comfortable attacking. So we will have to take one here if I want to keep Automaton untapped. There's maybe a reason to play the forest there. So we'll pass it back. We've got blockers available. Hopefully no Invoke Despair. It's going to be an Evolved Sleeper. Okay. And another Curtains. So they have access to a couple Death Touch creatures to play defense. Really just hoping for Reality Chip to completely go off. Mechanaut's also useful. So we can uh, play that first if we'd like. Or we can exile a card first. In case we find a reactor or another automaton. Alright, so now Mechanauts plus a free apprentice and the mana discount is going to make it easier to string together a whole bunch of spells. But we are at five, so don't have much time to present lethal. But this turn should be pretty sweet. Don't need a flyer necessarily. Bulwark will play for free. Can tap it right away. So still waiting for a reality chip. Another Mechanaut I'll take. Using the Mana Worker so we don't take damage off our Pain Land. And then now do we feel comfortable exiling an extra card? We haven't exiled a land yet, so we might want to get rid of one, but at five we also need to make sure we keep enough blockers back, especially when facing a bunch of Menace creatures. Now I could attack with a 14-14 Automaton, and if they trade for Shieldred we're happy, if they chump we're happy. So sure, let's uh, send in the 14-14. 
They don't quite have the mana to give Evolved Sleeper Death Touch, since they don't have enough black. So it seems like a fine window to attack. And then I'm hoping five blockers are enough. Opponent just jumping with a sleeper. They can draw enough turn with Bankbuster. And we'll pass. Then there's still quite a few cards that kill us. And with uh, Shieldred putting us to three next turn, we would be dead to Invoke Despair. Bankbuster draws. Okay, so no Invoke Despair at least. They might have a cut down in hand, but there's not many creatures they can kill with it. Right, it's going to be an Infernal Grasp killing our largest automaton. That happens. Probably won't see any attacks. And then the question is, can we present lethal to kill our opponent here? Otherwise we're just dead next turn to Trespasser, draining us for one. And uh, shield it two more. And there we go, Reality Chip is what we needed. So play that for one mana. Then we can tap the Reality Chip itself to help reconfigure. Doesn't matter too much where we put it at this point. Tap a mirror box, reconfigure, put it on the flyer. Okay, and then now free mana worker coming up. Free artificer, pumping the ones in play. Another mirror box would come in handy. And we can tap the summoning sick creatures to exile the top card. There's another mirror box. Awesome. Should probably be tapping my pain lands as opposed to my basics. Although double mana worker can still help with our mana situation. Free bulwark. Now we can exile the top card. Since we've already played a land. Although actually bulwark we can give haste to, so we shouldn't tap those. So we may actually have lethal here. Another Myria. Is that worth playing? Yeah, I think maybe just going for Bulwark is fine, although I kind of want to see how many more cards we can cast. So let's give Miria a shot. And then tap the Summoning Sick Mana Worker. The Reactor we can play and it pays for itself as a one mana artifact and our opponent explodes. Awesome. So yeah, the last possible turn where we could actually find a reality chip and combo and we did it. So yeah, if you get Myria plus a reality chip going, it can be incredibly satisfying, especially alongside Mechanaut giving you a mana discount, and then Mirror Box allowing you to keep all your legendaries in play. So yeah, that's our game plan. Hopefully we don't face too many sweepers in the process. But yeah, very satisfying deck once you get to combo off like this. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.